everyone. My name is Crystal Foreman. I am the owner of Holistic Wellness and Health. I'm a health and wellness educator and a health coach as well. Holistic Wellness and Health makes healthy living easy, nutritious, delicious, and fun with a focus on plant-based foods to help you live a healthier and more vibrant life. So today is part two of our container gardening. Um, yesterday we did container gardening using small plants. So one of the benefits of doing container gardening is um, like if you have a small space like a patio, balcony, or porch, um, it's a great way to use the space to grow food um, or just have pretty plants as well. Um, if you don't have a patio or balcony or anything like that, you can um, also grow a lot of these plants indoors as long as you have some sunlight. And if you don't have a lot of sunlight in your home, then you can um, use other light sources uh, there or like bulbs that you can buy specifically to help your plants grow. Okay, so yesterday I planted um, some radishes and um, some scallions that were already started. Today I am going to um, finish planting some things. So today we're focusing on small and medium sized car uh, containers. So this is like a three gallon um, food container so you can get a lot of these for free um, from some food service um, vendors out there, restaurants. Instead of them throwing it away, you can ask them if you can have them. It's great um, because of the depth, it's great for growing potatoes. And if you are watching the replay, make sure you say hi, let me know you're here. I'm actually going to measure this right now. So this is about 14 and a half inches, which is perfect for um, potatoes and carrots and things like that. I also have my earth box out here with me. So I think I'm going to go in and plant in this. For those who don't know, um, earth box is basically a plastic bin that has been designed specifically to grow produce, um, flowers, and it has a raised an area where you can put, um, basically have it raised up so that you can fill it with water. This one came with um, casters, so this can get very heavy. It looks like it'll be light, but once you fill this up with a lot of soil, it actually is pretty heavy. Um, this will be our water reservoir area. I'm just showing you all the inside again. So I've had this for a couple of years now. It's been outside. This goes in here, um, and basically it helps keep everything raised up. It helps keep everything moist. So this is perfect for people who travel a lot and don't think they'll be able to, uh, there we go, don't think that they will be able to um, water a lot. It's also great for people who aren't really good with growing things. It makes it a lot simpler for them. So you just put this base in. I'm going to put this tube in here. And basically when you get ready to water, let's see, let's see that. water, you pour the water in here and that deep base I showed you is where the water reservoir will help so it'll help hold the water. If you have any questions, um, please tag me. Let me know if you're here. Say hi um, so that I can see it in the comments. Um, just to see that you're here. Feel free to share this as well. So I'm actually going to get started with our um, earth box first. You can actually make these. Um, some of them cost anywhere from $35 to like over $100. You can make them yourself using something like this, uh, just a regular tote, and putting a platform on it so it's raised and just getting like a little PVC pipe to put in it. So you can easily do that yourself. I'm going to actually fill the bottom with um, cheap soil, potting soil from Ace, just because my plants are not going to actually touch it. And it's a great way to fill up the container without using expensive soil. Um, I did, also I do have organic potting mix, so I'll be using it to actually put um, like on the top there. I want to get started. I think you can still see. We'll push that. Also use um, pebbles at the bottom. Um, just make sure your um, 
container has holes in the bottom of it. So you can actually put pebbles down um, and then put the soil in and that'll help retain water as well. So we were growing radishes in here. It was um, something that was quick growing. It takes about 21 days for it to um, go uh, from seed to being able to be harvested. I'm just gonna break this up there like big huge clumps here. So I'm just gonna break this up. And in this, I'm going to do a solid mix um, in this particular box. I have two. The first couple of years I did radishes. Second year, I must gift it a special mugwort plant, so I um, planted that when that was in there for a couple years. Yeah. This year I'm going to actually clear that out and put some other plants in there for growing food. So some people are like, why would you grow mugwort? Because um, it's everywhere in the city, but this was a special um, type that's used to make moxa. Not all mugwort is used for that, and it was a special gift. Potting soil. If you don't want to get your hands dirty, which I suggest you get your hands dirty, um, but if you don't want to, you can wear gloves doing this as well. So, make sure I have more in here than I want. Oh, also, this earth box came with uh, some plant food, some dolomite, and this cover. Um, so, you can either have to cover on the dark side, which will attract more sunlight to heat everything up, or you can put the cover on the light side, um, just to protect your plants if you need to. Um, I will probably do it on the dark side, just so it gets it's still kind of cool out, so it can get more heat. So, if you're here, say hi. Hi, Candace. See you're watching. It's good to see you. Um, several different things today. First of all, Renee's Garden has some uh, special seeds that are made, meant just for the container. It's um, they have, uh, cucumber, bush slicer, that's specifically meant for the container. I'm not doing that today because it's too cold for it. They also have um, container eggplant, which um, can get to about four inches in length. So that's really cool. It's called the Little Prince. Um, so that they do have varieties of seeds that are specifically meant for the container. Um, this one as well is called the Garden Babies of Butterhead. Um, I will probably do this next week in a bigger container, um, but you can use a smaller container for this as well. Um, hey, cool Candace, I'm glad this is helpful. Hi Cousin Rosita, good to see you. Um, so I am going to do some come again mustard greens. So basically you can hard, like plant them, they come up in about 40 days. And then you can cut them, use the leaves, and then they'll come back. And so you can harvest them several times throughout the season. So I love that. Same thing with the baby leaf blend and my um, white wine country muslin, uh, mescaline, mescaline blend. So um, basically, no, that blend, no. mescaline, or mescaline means uh, that it's uh, a mix of different grains. So in this case, no, it's a mix of no. lettuces, um, but it just means mix. So that's what I'll be doing. I like eggplant too, yeah. Um, and the one that, so I picked up a couple of varieties. The one that um, I just showed you is specifically for container gardens. But I have another one that is for the, um, to go out into the soil and the, and the actual earth. Um, it's too cold to plant eggplant. You need it to not drop below 50 degrees at nighttime um, or it won't survive. And so we usually don't get those type of temperatures until May. Um, you can do it now and take it inside. Um, hi, Katrina. <laughs> and you can take it inside um, if you want, but it's definitely um, it's risky to do it right now because I think it, it got down to like 40 degrees past or past couple of nights, so it's too cold for things like eggplants and tomatoes and cucumbers right now. But it won't be that way for long. 
Alright, so let's get our organic soil in. Yesterday I was using um, that gold. And this bag was like $10. And I actually got another bag that's bigger, it's like twice the size, and I got that for $17. I'm just gonna stand up and put my organic potty mix in. And maybe you all can see. A lot of questions about growing vegetables. I'm here to answer your questions, so feel free to ask. There we go. So this is, I'm thankful you all are here. Um, this is great motivation for me, to be honest. I probably would have waited <laughs> to do this. So um, it's cool that I can show you all what I'm doing and actually get some work done as well. Um, this soil has perlite. Let's see if you can see that. That's the white. Uh, there we go. White parts, it has some wood chips, um, some earthworm castings, alfalfa meal so that'll help make it uh, a lot more nutritious as well. Alright, so cool thing with uh, these, I'm going to start with the baby leaf then. The cool thing about these is that you, can, you don't have to be perfect about passing them because you're just going to have a bunch of different lettuces growing up and then uh, just like I said, you just kind of Cut it, eat your salad, and then it'll come back. So I love plants like that. Hello. <laughs> so these are our seed blends. It's gonna gently just a few and spread it out. Uh, there we go. I was wondering where all my different colors. I was mostly seeing white seeds. There are different colors in here. Uh, there you go. Um, can't really see it too well because my hands are about dirt on it, but some black seeds in here as well. And then I'm just going to cover this with some potting mix. And the container says uh, oh, put a quarter inch of soil on top. So this is a great time to plant. This is between February and June. Um, it requires full sun, so I'm going to put it on the porch for now, and then um, later on it'll probably go in the back. The thing with lettuce is that when it gets hot, they don't really like the heat too much, and they start to bolt. This means they grow, um, they start to flower. They grow really fast, they start to flower. And once it starts to flower, um, the leaves become bitter, and most people don't like that. Hey, Kendra. Um, most people don't like the bitter um, leaves, so you definitely want to keep it cool. One of the things you can do is just um, to keep it cool during the summertime is grow, like, move your planter either to an area that's shaded or um, grow it with plants that grow tall. So some people just put um, plants that get really tall next to them. That is just to keep it cool throughout the summer. Anybody has any questions about what I'm doing or pretty much anything in general um, around gardening, just let me know. And then I'm just going to give that a little spray to soil. It was fairly moist already. I'm just using a dollar tree for a water sprayer. <laughs> Um, if you don't can't get a container right now, some places most hardware stores are open. Dollar trees are open as well, so you can get it from the dollar like a container from the Dollar Tree. So it's been a spend of forty dollars on an earth box. You can get something like this. Put some holes in the bottom, and like I was saying earlier, just fill it with some pebbles um, so that it's raised up and will help retain the water. And then you can put your soil in here and grow um, whatever you need to grow. So. I'm 
put holes in there yet or in this container, um, but just get a drill, drill a couple of holes in there, and you're good to go. Four holes is good. Um, all right, so I'm going to spray some more water in here, and then I'm going to plant some stuff. I saw this plant that is heavy. Um, this is a Mexican coriander, and I have not seen this since I was in um, Costa Rica a few years ago. And I remember thinking that I love this. Oh yes, Lowe's. Can you get the soil from Home Depot Lowe's? Yes. So I got these from soil from Ace Hardware, but you can definitely go to the big box stores as well. They'll have soil. Um, if you can support your local hardware stores, that's cool. I know some of them are still open. I'm not sure about uh, Vulcan. I can't think of the name of them, but they're on 34th Street. I'm not sure if they're open, but I know... Um, Ace is definitely open during these times. You're letting just a few people in the store at a time, but it hasn't been busy. So I would suggest going in the morning um, if you can, um, or late in the day. So that is ready. This box, so first, I'm going to put my um, cilantro and Mexican coriander, Andrew, I'm sorry, coriander, put that in. So I'll just show you all how to get this out. Um, I spoke to uh, my farmers at the Greener Garden to see when their um, transplants will be ready. And they said um, it'll be a couple of weeks. We're actually going there tomorrow to pick up some produce for a cooking demo I'm doing tomorrow night. Um, tomorrow at 5 o'clock uh, I'll be doing carrot salad as well as uh, what else am I doing? kale and um, bean soup. out here today. All right, so I'm kind of breaking up this, uh, the roots here, so to make sure they're not um, bound too close together. I'm just going to put it in a container, and then I'm going to fill it up with uh, organic soil here. So I'm excited to have this because I haven't had um, this uh, Mexican coriander in a few years now. It's kind of spiky, like it's something you might not want to eat, um, but it is really good. I really enjoy it. All right. And if you have popsicle sticks, that's a great way to label um, your plants. If you don't, you can also use a tape and just write on the um, tape what it is and put it on your container. So this is a great way just to keep up with what you actually have. I also have two different lavenders here. I have uh, the lavender that most people are used to, um, lavender Provence, and then I have the French lavender. So it's uh, kind of has, it looks like little tiny burn leaves. So I'll be planting these as well. Um, does anyone have any questions about anything? So you said there's an ace near you. Yeah, those are um, independently owned. Um, so that's a great way to kind of support small businesses um, right now because the big box stores will get bailed out. They don't need our help. But if you can help the smaller businesses, that would be awesome. Um, so I'm actually going to put this cover on here. This helps keep the, keep the moisture in and get more sun on here as well. Um, more heat in here. So moisture and heat. Looks like a big basic cap. I'm not sure if you all can see this. Oh, what about that? So I'm going to go in and finish planting up some stuff. I'm going to do some small containers right now. I want to get some other seeds in, but like I said, I'll be doing the bush beans and eggplants a little later. I, I'm actually going to go on to what, let me fill this up. It's best to put the holes in um, first. Since when is the best time to plant flowers on the front porch? Normally wait until mid-May. Um, so it depends on if your porch is um, 
south facing, east facing, if you're getting a lot of sun. Um, if it's not getting a lot of sun, um, you want to like kind of base on like where your porch is actually facing. So my porch is uh, east facing. So I get the morning sun and the early afternoon, early and afternoon sun. Um, so that's one thing. It also depends on what type of flowers you're doing. Um, usually mid-May is a good time um, to make sure your plants survive and get over like you don't have to worry about like another 40 degrees at night in May as much as like now so um, I think that waiting till mid-May is really a good time to do that um, Candace but it's completely up to um, it, it depends on where you're do you know where it's facing like where your porch is facing if it's east facing north facing um, that'll let me know as well and also, if it's a covered porch that doesn't get any sunlight. So, like, my, I'm in a covered um, porch, but I get the morning sun. In the afternoon, I don't get any sun on this uh, late afternoon. Evening. There's no sun here. Um, so, if you can let me know, if you know, just let me know. Let me get this container. So, this one I'm actually going to plant. Wine Country Muspin, and this is the Renee's Garden brand. I'm going to use this. I'm going to add some more soil here. So like, I'm glad that I'm doing this. You all are motivating me to actually do what needed to be done. Get some seeds in here. Uh, next week I'll be doing uh, more medium to large size. Um, things that are great for like growing potatoes and carrots and things like that. So these are another um, multicolored looking seeds, different sizes, uh, different shapes. Let's see. There we go. So I'm just going to broadcast this in here. Lightly with some soil. About half an inch to an inch deep. Okay. And spray that as well. The soil is already pretty moist. Um, when you're starting new seeds, you want to make sure that you keep the, moist, the soil moist for the first seven to ten days. So um, just check like every couple of days to make sure nothing's drying out. Or your seeds might not survive um, and germinate um, or if it does germinate it might not grow um, if, it, if you allow it to get dry so let me see how I'm doing on time all right so we have just a few more minutes left um, if anyone has any questions feel free to ask particularly I know someone asked about herbs so if there are any herbs that you're interested in learning more about I do plan on doing an herb um, garden as well and I'm going to show you all my um, front yard um, at a later date I have a lot of uh, I have like a wild onions I have um, of course clover and I have uh, purple dead nettle and I want to show you all um, some recipes that you can do with that because it's plentiful it's everywhere right now um, so it'd be cool just to show you all what to do with those things I'm just breaking up this soil again and I'm going to add some more inexpensive soil to the bottom of this. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to measure this one. Okay, so this one is about nine inches deep. So if you're doing something like carrots, you want to make sure that uh, you give it at least 12 inches of depth. I just want to open up this other bag. This bag is about a fourth of the cost of the other, um, the organic soil. So um, if you are looking to just kind of save a little money, you can kind of line the bottom with this. I'm hoping to get the things I want for my larger containers to make it, first of all, not as heavy, but also to make it inexpensive to do gardening. So 
I'm just going to sit in my bag. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Tomorrow I'll be coming live. Um, I'll be doing a cooking demo in my family's kitchen. And um, I'll be using produce from the Green Garden Urban Farm. So I'll be picking up produce from them tomorrow. And um, making some carrot salad as well as kale. And um, bean soup using produce from their farm. Can y'all hear me okay? are our friends when it comes to gardening. Oh good, you can hear me. I know I kind of stepped away from the camera a little bit. I'm just going to break this up. So it's pretty hard. It's an expensive soil. It's all good. Got my happy worm in there. Make sure you have what you need. Some good soil on here now. break all this up and I think I'm actually going to do something different here. One second. So I've already planted my um, medicine. So I'm going to go in and plant the come again. It's called cut and come again mustard. Um, mustard greens are really good for your liver health. Um, helps your liver detox. It's got like that nice bitter. So, um, up. So worms are our friends in gardening. Yes, <laughs> worms are great. Uh, slugs are not, <laughs> um, but worms are awesome. Yeah, the worm castings. They're they're worm castings are basically worm poop. Um, they are basically um, fertilizers, and they are great for um, adding nutrients to your plants. Um, so if you have happy worms. They won't leave your um, plant area, and they benefit your plant. And it's like a beautiful symbiotic relationship. Everyone's happy. The worms are happy. The plants are happy. You're happy. So it's all good. Um, yeah, I'm just going to put a few more in. So these are just a, um, different various um, brassica mustards. Mustards here. And then you want to add some um, of our soil on top of this one. And then I think we're... We're actually at time now, so um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, please like this video. The more likes that this shows, like has, then Facebook says, "Oh, people are watching this. People like this," and then they'll share it with other people um, as well for them to see this. So if you can um, just push like, uh, more love, and share this as well if you feel that it's helpful. And just going to spray this down. And that is it for me today. Um, so I will check for questions in a little while. Um, make sure you tag my name or Holistic Wellness and Health so I know that there's a question there. Sometimes people leave comments, and um, unless I go back to the post, I don't see them all. So just tag me, um, Crystal Foreman, or you can tag Holistic Wellness and Health. Okay? Alright, I just like spraying. So I'm going to get this out of my hand. Um, so we used the earth box today, we used just a standard old cheap uh, tote.
bulk that you can get from any store, including the Dollar Tree. We um, planted some more small containers uh, as well. So I will show you all like in a couple of weeks what everything looks like. The beets and the uh, what did we do yesterday? Beets and radishes. They should be ready um, in just a few weeks. I'll show you that pro the progress of those. Um, and I'm going to take some pictures like after two weeks just so you can see what they're looking like. And uh, I'll also show you how the scallions are doing. They're doing well. They were just doing well in water anyway. So I'll show you all that as well. But thank you all so much for watching. My name is Crystal Foreman. I am your plant-based health wellness educator and coach. And um, everyone stay healthy and blessed. Until tomorrow at 5 o'clock, live at 5. Bye.